Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I. B. DeGange doing political commentary for the media speaks. The massive Fukushima update. Um, usually the highest viewed show that I do in any given month. That means that a lot of you are trusting me with this news. And I'm going to make sure I hold your trust there as I prevent the mic from popping every time I say a P. Friends, you tuned in because you know it matters. You know it matters. You know that you got to dig for the truth. Because the, main, well, the mainstream media almost never reports on it. And when they do, they always tell you how safe it is. Meanwhile, half of the children in Japan are testing with all kinds of abnormalities, largely in their thyroids, which of course is a sign of radiological poisoning. So I wanted to get to this. This is from Tyler Durden at Zero Hedge, a great name for those of you that know the Fight Club reference. TEPCO admits Fukushima is leaking again, over 600 times the safe radiation levels. Now, for those of you that don't know, let's reiterate what a safe level is. The safe level is whatever they can raise it to and evacuate the least number of people. The safety limit in your food is the absolute most they can give you without you falling over immediately and still make money. Does that sound safe to you? Well, then keep your ears open. Because it's 600 times worse than that. Having killed a robot by underestimating the level of radiation present in the Fukushima power plant, again, look up um, the robot. that We covered that story extensively about two weeks ago. And after delaying its previous admission of a leak, TEPCO Electric Power Company has quickly admitted that the nuclear power plant has sprung another leak. No, I am not covering a story I've already covered. This is, in fact, happening yet again. As EFE reports, and there's links all over this article, a small quality, quality of radioactive water has leaked from a storage tank with 70 microsieverts per hour of beta ray emitting radioactivity detected on the surface where the water had leaked, far exceeding the recommended maximum exposure of 0.11 millisieverts per hour. But apart from that, it's contained. Yeah. For those of you that uh, get the uh, reference there, they've been telling you how safe and contained it is. It's been leaking and spewing radioactive uh, poison into the water and the air since March 11th of 11. RT reports a total of 40 milliliters of water was discovered. A TEPCO, that is GE, where you should never have your stock if they're in a mutual fund that you're in, pull out of it. The plant's operator said on May 1st, that is TEPCO. The company believes that the liquid leaked from the storage tank, Japan's Ashahi Simbun paper reported Saturday. <clears throat> TEPCO stated that it placed bags of sand around the tank to prevent water from contaminating other areas. The wet patch, measuring 20 square centimeters, was discovered by one worker at around 9.30 a.m. local time on May 1st. So yeah, I would like to know how badly that poor man got juiced. I hope God's with him tonight. It said, um, according to TEPCO, 70 millisieverts per hour of beta ray emitting radioactivity were detected on the surface where the water had leaked. The leak was detected on the same day as tests began in preparation for the construction of 1.5 kilometer long frozen soil wall around the reactor buildings, which has largely not worked. Uh, it was made to build subways. It wasn't made for this. Also, let me ask you another question. How much of this water is leaking <clears throat> that they haven't found? You never hear anybody asking that way. You were supposed to believe they found everyone when they keep finding them and they didn't know about them. How many have leaked and just dried up and we didn't notice it? How many are leaking as this story is being uh, reported to you? The project is aimed at preventing further leaks of radioactive water into the sea from the Fukushima plant. In late April, the water transfer pumps at the Fukushima plant were shut down due to a power outage leading to the leaking of radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. Again, so never eat anything out of the Pacific. If you don't know it from, if it's out of the Pacific or not, then just don't eat it. It was preceded by a series of toxic leaks in February, which saw around 100 tons of highly radioactive water leaked from one of the plant's tanks. So this is not 
the definition of cold shutdown or containment. Look up both of those. Look up nuclear cold shutdown once. Look up nuclear containment. If it is leaking profusely all over the planet, it is not contained. That I wish I I really wish I had a sound a sound person here. I, I would sample the uh, the Princess Bride. I don't think that means that word you keep saying. I don't think it means what you keep think it means. That is not what containment is. That is, in fact, the opposite of what containment means. This is from RT as well. Pumps at Fukushima plant halted. Toxic water leaking into ocean. TEPCO. Now, this is April 21st. This is before the last story. So this is another leak that had happened before the leak that happened now in their contained, non-leaking plant that's in cold shutdown. All the eight water transfer pumps at the Fukushima 1 nuclear power station have been shut down due to a power outage leading to a leak of radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean, the plant's operator said. So even though many of you believe in global warming, and I do not, I understand the Fukushima update brings a lot of people that do not agree with many of the things I do except for Fukushima, and then we're on the same page. Okay, fine. Let's, let me pretend that I believe that man is warming the planet when I know he's not. I'll go there. How is nuclear the answer to helping the environment? This is worse than any coal plant disaster that has ever happened. Look up what a neutron star is. This meltdown has given us a little tiny neutron star burning in Japan. That is not helping the environment. I'm sorry, you don't have to be Greenpeace to figure this out. Tokyo Electric Power reported the power outage on Tuesday, according to Kyoto News Agency. It follows the line of toxic leaks that were reported in February, when at one point around 100 tons of highly radioactive water leaked out of the plant's tanks. That was February. We covered that a lot. The February report prompted Tempco to launch a pumping process at the site. This began just last Friday. The pumps were confirmed to be working Monday afternoon, but at 8.45 a.m. on Tuesday, they were found stopped. The incident and the amount of water already leaked are being checked, according to the company. The pumps are being used to transfer tainted water from drainage channel to a channel that leads to an artificial bay in front of the station, enclosed by a fence. So, obviously, this is a very precarious layout. It says, earlier this year, TEPCO stated that last May's water samples from the drainage channel contained radioactive materials, that is, cancer-causing materials that will go into the bodies of these people working there, and if they make their way to the ocean, will go into the fish that you eat and give you cancer and heart disease and bone issues, and you'll catch every flu that comes down the pike in between. That's what that means. The concentration exceeded the legal limit, which is estimated at just 30 becquerels of radioactive strontium-90 per liter. Strontium-90, what is it? I'll break it down for you. It's bone cancer. That's what strontium-90 is. Um, it mimics calcium. So one of the things you can do to help a lot of this is to take calcium supplements and make sure that you have calcium in. You don't drink a lot of milk to do this because milk tends to attract radioactive iodine and cesium so you don't want to drink a lot of milk and now that fukushima has happened but calcium because if your body is full of calcium it won't suck up as much of the strontium does this stop it no it helps it nothing stops it that's why it's the worst disaster in all of recorded history It says, overall, in the period between May of 11 and August of 13, according to a series of statements from the company, groundwater leaks ended up in as many as 20 trillion becquerels of cesium-137. 10 trillion becquerels of strontium-90 and 40 trillion becquerels of tritium reaching the sea. While you're zoning out, what is a becquerel? We say at every show, we'll do it again. A becquerel is a tiny reaction, a little explosion, if you will, that happens inside your body on a cellular level. When these explosions happen, it's one per second, that is a becquerel. Any of these explosions can trigger another cell and prevent it from dying properly. We have a name for that. We know what that name is, it's cancer. 40 trillion becquerels is 40 
trillion explosions per second. And each of those has the likelihood or a very, a very high probability of giving you cancer. That is what a Becquerel is. Let me read these numbers again now that we've gotten the dictionary out. 20 trillion becquerels of cesium-137. I always say it. What is cesium? Cesium is so deadly. You know how uh, bands, uh, D-Lake loves this story. You got obituary and death. Well, guess what? You have cesium-137. They named it that because it's deadly. It gives you cancer and it kills you. It hurts your heart. 10 trillion becquerels of strontium-90. We've already established what that is. That's bone cancer. The Fukushima Daiichi plant Tra uh, tragedy with nuclear meltdowns at three of the plant's six reactors. We know that. TEPCO's efforts to manage the release of the radioactive material has been slammed by the global community due to its suppression policy, which we're still allowing them to do. We, we sanction every other country, but when somebody is actually poisoning the whole globe, we don't sanction them. Well, they're our friend. Yeah, Saudi Arabia is our friend, too. Look where that gets us. It says this year the company was revealed to have been concealing reports of dangerously high radiation levels at the plant in September. So, of course, now they're lying. They're, uh, we have names, too, for people that kill their own people. If they're giving their own people cancer by lying to them about what is happening at the plant so that they live in some proximity to this death trap to keep the economy going, then how is that different? from Adolf Hitler who killed his own people for the betterment of the bottom line and the creation of the Third Reich. How is it any better than the poor abused people in North Korea who are their whole families locked up in prisons over political dissent for the good of the bottom line of the party? We condemn Hitler we condemn North Korea and the crazy un. Why does Japan get a pass on this? Killing their own people, and by proxy, they're killing a large amount of the globe. This is from RT. This is uh, some Chernobyl news as we cover all things nuclear here. For those of you that don't know, in 1986, the second worst uh, nuclear disaster of all time happened in the Ukraine. Forest fires heading for Chernobyl nuclear plant, Ukraine Interior Ministry. The Ukrainian National Guard has been put on high alert due to worsening forest fires around the crippled Chernobyl nuclear power plant. According to the Ukraine Interior Minister Arsen Avakov, the forest fire situation around the Chernobyl plant has worsened. Now it's a statement from his Facebook page. The forest fire is heading in the direction of Chernobyl's installations. Treetop flames and strong gusts of wind have created a real danger of the fire spreading to an area within 20 kilometers of the power plant. There are about 400 hectare acres, that's 988 acres for those of you in America, of forests in the endangered area. Police and National Guard units are on high alert. The Ukraine's Prime Minister personally went to the affected area to oversee the firefighting. He says the situation is under control, but this is the biggest fire since 92. It says, however, his comments to Russia Moscow Speaks Radio, a representative of Greenpeace Russia, said that the situation is much worse. A very large catastrophic forest fire is taking place in a 30-kilometer zone around the Chernobyl power plant. We estimate, it says, that the real area of the fire is 1,000 hectare acres, 10,000 hectare acres, excuse me. This is based on satellite images. This hasn't been officially acknowledged yet. So they're lying about the fire and the danger uh, that it's posing because the bigger the fire, the bigger force behind it is why that matters. Look up what the elephant toe is. There is a massive amount of radiation stored in oh, forever. The, you know what the half-life of plutonium is, millions of years, forever. Just call it forever. There is a massive amount of radioactivity forever in the Sagafkis over here at Chernobyl. Chris Busby said that they should have to, uh, their whole family should have to sit in front of it forever and ever and ever and say that we're the idiots to put this here and we're cursed with having to uh, forever build new Sagafkai to keep this. Um, all jokes aside, thousands of people died giving their life to build the containment 
that is happening at Chernobyl. It is literally falling over. It was made in, uh, it's, they started making it after the disaster, of course, in 86. It says the potential danger if this fire comes from the radioactive containments the burning plants have absorbed, ecologist, as we just quoted, Christopher Busby told RT. Some of the materials that are contaminating the area would have been incorporated into the woods. In other words, when the plant melted down and, uh, the, and everything settled, it went into the trees and it went into the ground and the grass and the mushrooms and whatever. In other words, he says, they land on the ground in 1986 and they get absorbed into the trees and all of the biosphere. And when it burns, like it is now, they just become resuspended because you can't kill radioactivity by burning it. It's like Chernobyl all over again, Chris Busby said. All of that material that fell on the ground will now be burned into the air and will become available for people to breathe again. Christopher Busby is a scientific secretary, he's a hero of mine, of the European Committee on Radiation Risks. He's too good to come on the show because, you know, we don't have a lot of money or anything, but he's been invited repeatedly and is still a hero. Ecologist Dmitry Shvichenko from the Environmental Watch on North Caucasus says it's difficult to predict where exactly the contaminants will go. We don't have a real-time monitoring system for the Chernobyl area. No, why would you bother to do that? We don't have real-time monitoring system for the Chernobyl area. As the fire burns out of control, they're not testing the air that they're breathing. That's, that's wonderful news. How does this happen? It says we can hypothesize whether the radionuclides will go here or go there, but there is no one who can reliably predict the situation. Well, how much of your food comes from the Ukraine? I mean, they've got so many problems over there now. we got America funding neo-Nazis. And now we've got this forest fire that is threatening Chernobyl and, as we just pointed out, as Dr. Chris Busby said, is recontaminating the air all over Ukraine that's in the smoke from the forest fire. Do you know that if you were to inhale cesium or plutonium into your lungs and you were buried and the bug ate that piece of plutonium when he was eating your dead carcass, that bug would be radioactive. If a bird ate the bug, the bird would be radioactive. If the bird flew over your house, that piece of cesium, and he dies in your backyard, bam. Now that cesium, you think that's fake? You think I made that up? Look up cesium. I don't usually turn on cameras to willfully lie to people. Look it up. But this is happening in mega doses in this forest fire. Ukrainian emergency services, it goes on, say that 182 people and 34 vehicles have been dispatched to fight the fire. A MI-8 helicopter and three and 32 water-dropping airplanes were also working at the scene. Great. Now, the helicopter people are poisoned beyond belief from the toxic smoke that they have to put out. So there's more heroes that will be dying of cancer five, ten years from now, and nobody will ever remember their name or what they gave to us. That kind of thing bothers me. It bothers me greatly. Where's the acknowledgement for these heroes? Where, where's, where's their thanks? It says the efforts are being coordinated from the mobile emergency headquarters. And again, they, they bring their clothes back. They take their clothes off in the place. Oh, my God. According to the head of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone Management Department, radiation levels in the area remain normal. Well, we've already established what normal is established, uh, is I uh, drawn at, I should say. The area on fire is relatively clean. Vasily, v v Vasily Zolotervica told the newspaper KP.UA. He said that the fire started at lunchtime when emergency workers had finished putting out an earlier blaze, which started during the night. The emergency services have stated that it could have been caused by a lit cigarette. So they were eating at the time, and of course we know that if, if the smoke was near them, God only knows what they ingested. I mean, you know, unless the smoke went all around them. Ukraine's acting head of emergency services said earlier that the forest fires were not a threat to the Sagafkis sealing off Chernobyl's crippled Reactor 4. And again, if it wasn't for Busby pointing out the obvious here with what's happening with the trees burning and the grass burning, then 
it would be considered safe unless it hit Chernobyl. But you get facts when you dig a little deeper, and I think that's why you tuned in. Chernobyl and the surrounding area have been abandoned and remain off limits. I, I, of course it has. So yeah, and the rest of this you can go ahead and look it up. It says it became the worst nuclear disaster in the world in history of casualties and cleanup costs. Reactor 4, where the blast took place, was sealed off in a giant reinforced concrete sarcophagus to prevent future leaks. And again, thousands of, uh, of men gave their lives to build that. And it's falling over now. Uh, News.yahoo.com. Ukraine marks 29 years since the Chernobyl disaster, and I think that the, it needed to be mentioned in our update here. It says, um, Ukrainians on Sunday marked 29 years since the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, placing wreaths and candles near the plant where the local, where they lay a new seal over the reactor site has been delayed. So yeah, the seal that keeps the radiation out, the seal that needs to be put in there has been delayed. Well, that's, that's remarkable news for everyone in the Ukraine. They're just getting juiced and juiced and juiced and juiced. I wouldn't live there if you gave me a mansion. It's a, you do, look up look up Belarus birth defects if you think I'm making that up. I'm telling you, be prepared to be horrified. How horrified? I can watch horror movies. I can watch Saw and eat a lasagna. It, I, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Chinese food. Ain't going to bother me a bit. I don't like faces of death. I don't like things of people really dying. Look up Ukrainian or Belarus birth defects from Chernobyl. It'll make you sick. It says, um, the explosion of reactor number four on April 20, 26, 1986, I remember it, the shuttle disaster too, it was uh, quite a year, spewed poisonous radiation over large parts of Europe, particularly Ukraine, Belarus, as I mentioned, and Russia. At 1.23 a.m., uh, the exact time of the explosion, hundreds of people placed flowers and candles in the dark at the foot of the monument of, of Slavuchek, a town 30 miles from the plant. So, yeah, again, there is uh, there is nuclear making the world better. The town was built to rehouse Chernobyl workers who managed to live who had lived near the plant and were forced to move further away from the disaster. At the site of the plant itself, around 100 kilometers from Kyiv, which is seeing a horrible war right now, Ukraine's president, Petro Polovchenko, laid a wreath at the monument of the victims. The human toll of the disaster is still disputed. Yeah, but it's because the UN has lied about it. They said that there were 31 deaths recognized, but environmental groups uh, such as Greenpeace have suggested that there would be around 100,000 additional cancer deaths caused from the disaster. So 100,000 cancer deaths is what you do when you melt down a nuclear power plant for the good of the environment. It says, Poroshenko on Sunday inspected ongoing work of the 20,000 20, tons steel cover a project estimated the cost $2.2 billion. Tell me again how nuclear reactors are uh, perfectly um, economically sound, too. Please, I'm all ears. Friends, this is from Fukushima hyphen diary, Fukushima diary. Most of the inspected dolphins had lungs in itchy, it looks like ischemia. It's a state where they are entirely white. This is, of course, the, the seafood that you're eating. It's the seafood that you're eating when you have tuna. It's, it's what you're eating when you go to restaurants. Iori Mok uh, Mokizuki, a he another hero. According to the National Science Museum, most of the inspected 17 dolphins had their lungs in Ishikamiya states. The researching team, which consists of approximately 30 experts, performed the autopsy in on 17 dolphins. The chief of the researching team stated, quote, most of the lungs looked entirely white. She commented through internal organs were generally clean without any symptoms of disease or infection. But most of the lungs were in, in is that word again? Is it ischemia? Ischemia? And she said, I've never ever seen such a state. Most of the 160 dolphins died by the evening of 4-11-2015. It's taking out our oceans, people. This could be this, this could be the beginning of the end. And there are things we can do. One, one of the things is to pull TEPCO away 
and let intelligent people like Chris Busby and Helen Caldicott and Lauren Murray, let these minds come together for the best way to contain what is a problem that will be with us for the rest of rest of history. That's, it's that simple. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. We have one, two, three, four stories to get to, including the dumdy of the day. I just want to remind you that the, the show is brought to you by Sticker Junkie, who made these awesome passing time stickers. They're a dollar a piece. Support the band. We'd love you to. You want these stickers, don't you? They're made by Sticker Junkie. This is from our movie. They're made by Sticker Junkie. So what do you do? You go to StickerJunkie.com and you say, I heard about this on The Correct Views. Attention, David Lake. And let him know that you heard about it from the correct views, and you will get a discount on your stickers. That's what's going to happen, and you're going to be delighted. Next story here brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M A C L A U G H L I N. He writes political rants. He's a writer of fiction, he's a writer of poetry, and guess what? You can read his works by going to Facebook. He gives a lot of his stories out, and some of them you have to buy. Once you see the free ones, you're definitely going to want to buy all of his works. Michael Snyder, End of the American Dream, Michigan, Texas, Mississippi, California, Idaho, and Washington, all jolted by significant earthquakes. Why does that matter? Why is that being put here in the Fukushima update? Because while all of the meltdowns at Fukushima were not caused by an earthquake, some of them began to melt down prior to the tsunami. This proves that the earthquake can cause a meltdown. Also, a lot of our nuclear power plants are in fact near dams, which, guess what, would create a tsunami, which is what caused the other meltdowns at Fukushima. So this matters. It says, if you thought you felt an earthquake on Saturday, you did, and it was one of the strongest quakes ever experienced in Michigan. Paul Caruso, a geophysicist for the U.S. Geological Survey, said an earthquake of a magnitude 4.2 at a depth of 5.9 kilometers was measured around 12.23 p.m. Is that going to cause a meltdown? No. But the areas are getting more and more extreme, and places that are already extreme, like California, and we'll get to that in a minute, are looking like they're primed to shake even more. It says... um, This happened in Texas. North Texas was rattled once again by an earthquake on Sunday evening. Confirmed 3.2 magnitude earthquake two miles northeast of Irving. It says that nobody really thinks of Mississippi as a place for earthquakes, and yet the state was just hit by two of them. A 3.0 and a 3.2. Los Angeles was hit by a 3.8. And uh, according to the... Trembler occurred at 4.07 p.m. It was a depth of 5.6 miles. We've got um, sizable quakes also reported in regions of the country not typically known for seismic activity, like Idaho, who saw 4.1 or 4.2. The more volcanic uh, activity all over, looks like the book of Revelations is coming true, and then you say that, and everyone thinks you're crazy, even though it's absolutely spelled out for you that all this was happening. What can you do about it? Well, if it's an act of God, nothing, but you can not, how about not building a nuclear power plant to melt down while it's happening? It goes on about all the Hawaiian earthquakes that we've been seeing, we, we've reported on that. So what happens when an earthquake melts down the power plant in America. I'll tell you what happens. It poisons our food supply forever. It could be the downfall of the country. One of the reasons that Gorbachev uh, gave for the fall of the Soviet Union was the Chernobyl disaster. Do you understand this? This could be a little bit of good news. Um, This is from uh, KSL.com. Science and tech. Tiny robot pulls 2,000 times its own weight. Uh, Earlier we gave reference to the article, uh, the commentary piece that we did They sent a robot into the Fukushima plant, and the radiation levels were so high that it cooked the robot. Cooked won't work, done. That has happened repeatedly. The radiation levels can cook machinery. Well, if you can find a way to insulate it, this could be, again, so far we haven't, this could be extremely useful. So there is a little bit of good news in the Fukushima update here. Two of the world's newest robots are a lot stronger than they appear. 
Researchers at Sanford Uni created tiny robots that can carry or pull objects hundreds or thousands of times their own weight. It's like an ant. Called microtugs, the robots use controllable adhesive technology developed in the Biometrics and Dexterous Manipulation Laboratory. The 12 gram micro robot, they're going to have to make it bigger, obviously, but it's a technology that I'm reporting on here. Because we're going to be dealing with Fukushima for 40 years. You do know it's going to take a minimum of 40 years to get that into cold shutdown and uh, in a state where Chernobyl is, right? You do know this. The 12 gram robot uses control aboard adhesive like ants use to pull 2,000 times its weight. A description of Microtug's webpage reads it's the equivalent of the human adult dragging a blue whale around on land. Another bot, which weighs just 9 grams, is capable of carrying more than a kilogram while climbing vert vertically on glass. Researchers said this is equivalent to a human climbing a skyscraper while carrying an elephant. So if we can apply this uh, to something other than warfare and new ways to kill each other, it might actually help us at Fukushima because we have a mess there in just cleanup. For instance, when one of the, say a girder falls over, that girder cannot be brought around people ever. It's radioactive for all of mankind forever. You get around it, you're going to die. Get around it 20 years from now, you're going to die. We need to have these things moved. And moving things like that caused the death of thousands of people in Chernobyl, as I just told you about. This could prevent some of that, at least in theory. Again, you've got to insulate the damn thing, and that's proving to be a real problem. The climbing robot's design was inspired by geckos, according to the New Science. It was reported in the news from the Science Front how geckos are, their structure is leading to so much as we study them. It's reported that the tiny robot clings to walls using adhesives covered in minute rubber spikes which are found on the robot's feet. Eventually, the adhesive technology could be used for robots designed to haul heavy equipment and assist in emergency situations, like Fukushima. One example provided the new scientist is a robot carrying a ladder to a person trapped in a burning building. That's great. It you know, prevents uh, uh, more people being hurt from the falling debris. Since we are looking to bring the adhesive to market first, then the applications like these will be certainty of interest long, along with a ton of other things. Well, I just gave you one idea. It says it's pretty magical stuff to play with. Hopefully we can use it for something other than our own destruction. Friends, I have nothing against Jews. I do not like Zionists just the same. I must say I agree with Benjamin Netanyahu on this. Netanyahu warns that Iran can simply not get this nuclear power plant. And let me tell you one of the reasons why I, I agree with him so adamantly on this is because we know that the same people that predicted a disastrous earthquake <coughs> in Fukushima are the exact same people who are predicting the same kind of earthquake in Iran. So it doesn't matter which side of the Arab Jew bickering you are on. What matters is this plant is going to be a disaster. Now he approaches it from a different angle because many of the leadership there are murderous. I mean, you don't see Jews killing people for anti-Jewish cartoons, the way you see some factions of Islam doing so over Charlie Hebdo. So he's got a point there. He really does. Again, I'm not a huge supporter of the man, but when he's right, he's right. No, oh, Sam sold out to the Jewish lobby. Yeah, money's just rolling in, people. It's just rolling in. In a speech already winning attention in Washington, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Wednesday compared Washington's deal with Iran to Europe's appeasement of Adolf Hitler, which led to the Holocaust and the World War. And I could see that. There are factions of Islam that would very much like to make this a reality, even if it's not the leadership that does it. And it's easier than you think. We'll get to that on the dumb of the day next. In a speech at Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem to mark Holocaust Memorial Day, Netanyahu said that democracies cannot turn their eyes away from the dictatorships of the world that seek to spread their influence. I wish he would talk about the earthquake risk as well. He noted that ahead of World War II, the world attempted to appease the Nazis. They wanted quite 
at any price, and the terrible price did come. He, his office tweeted out major segments of his speech, such as, just as the Nazis aspired to crush civilization and to establish a master race as ruler of the world while now letting the Jewish people. That is exactly what radical Islam wants. They, wants us to all, they want us to all be Islamic, or they're going to kill us. They may kill us no matter what. Part of the story is also based on the reporting by Azuta Shavia, the Israeli news, it says. In back-to-back -back tweets, he said, uh, the one I just quoted you, and then he also put, so too does Iran strive to gain control over the region and then spread further with the explicit intent of obliterating the Jewish state. This has been stated. And, and again, I'm not talking about the white Jews off the, uh, com oh, off the map comment that uh, Ahmed Jenna Nazi said, because that actually wasn't what he said. I'm talking about what other leaders have said. I don't mean that quote. It didn't appear that he mentioned President Obama and the administration's effort to sell its Iran truce, but he promised to fight it even if Israel stands alone. Even if we will be forced to stand alone, we will not fall to. We will maintain our right to defend ourselves, said Netanyahu, who, who added that preventing another Holocaust is his personal responsibility. Well, if he waits long enough, the problem is he's going to bomb the nuclear site, and what that is in turn going to do is uh, create a mushroom, Cherno well, not a mushroom cloud, create a Chernobyl-like disaster with the fire and uh, burning uh, the entire Middle East, and that's going to kill more Jews than any, any Arab ever did. So that's not such a good idea either. But friends, that brings us to, of course, the dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. And it's quite a dum dee friends. Th I mean, this, this is a mega dum dee News.yahoo.com. Mexico scrambles to find stolen radioactive material. And... There is so many dumdies in this story that you're going to be amazed that these people are even smart enough to breathe that we're handling this. And then oversee the handling of this. Authorities appealed for help among Mexico's population Thursday to locate stolen radioactive material as the fourth such theft in less than two years prompted.